Hey, hey, it's your Zen RN nurse, Melly V, and I'm back with another video. As promised, I've put together a couple of pro tips for you guys. I think I'm gonna do these videos in part. So this is part one. If you are currently a student at Capella or you're thinking about becoming a student at Capella, this is a good video for you. In this video, I give you a sneak peek into the course room and give you some pro tips on where you wanna focus when you're writing a research paper. So if you're struggling with your research paper, you really don't know what your professor's looking for, I've got some meat and potatoes for you in here, just a little bit. I'll do a part two to this video as well. If there are any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to include that information in the next video. I hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. We are at the capella.edu homepage. What we want to do is, as students, go up to the right hand side, upper corner of the um, page, and click down where it says students and alumni. It will bring you to this page here. Once you get here, you want to click on home, which is where we've already landed. I've already pre-pulled this page up just for the sake of time and clicks. When you come here as a, a, a current student, you're actually going to see your course, your active courses right here. However, since I have completed my coursework, mine are going to drop down to previous courses. Okay. So down here, you can see all of the eight courses that I needed to take, the core courses for the RN to BS and Flex Path program at Capella University. Now, once you click on one of these, say, for example, our course uh, numbered 4000, I've already clicked on that. I'm just going to go to it. Click. It's going to open the course room. This is where you want to set your target dates. As soon as you get into your course, the first thing that you want to do is set your target dates. Why is this important? As soon as you enroll in the course, a time clock starts. That time clock has to do with your activity and engagement within the course. If you have no course engagement, then you can be dropped from the course, which can be problematic, especially if it's after the withdrawal date, which means financial ramifications, right? So we don't want that. So what you want to do as soon as you get in the, in the course, as soon as you, the course is open to you, this is the first place you want to go to set your target dates. That will record course engagement. We're going to focus on this area right here assessment and as you can see i'm already in my course and i'm in assessment two at the top it says assessment two applying research skills so you have your instructions your resources activities are those that you can actually do to begin getting the concept of what it is that's being asking for in this particular assignment and then you have one two three attempts to have your assignment graded um, you then have your introduction here, your instructions of what is required or being asked for you to do. You want to read everything, click on every link, and make sure that you understand completely what's being asked of you. When you're writing your research papers, there are two very critical components that are used by your professor to evaluate your work. The first one is the scoring guide at the bottom, which is also known as the rubric. Okay. The second one is your competency map. All right. So we're going to go over both of those. This is a pro tip. If you are writing a research paper, this is what you want to use as your outline for your draft so that you're making sure that you hit all of those points that are being asked of you in the paper. What does that look like, Melly? Okay, let's go look. We're gonna go to the scoring guide. This is your scoring guide. When you click at that link at the bottom of, the, of that uh, course, 
you'll see it will bring you to this um, rubric. At the very top, it shows you the criteria that is required in order for you to meet the grade of either non-performance, basic, proficient, and distinguished. Distinguished is the target. You, those are that's the moon that you want to shoot for, and if you don't, if you miss, you at least land on the stars. So that's where you want to copy of what I would do. Of what I did is I would copy this, copy it, and paste it into my Word document in bullet points, uh, my outline, so that I can make sure that I'm hitting on those points thoroughly every time. The worst that can happen when you do that is you land in proficient. Okay, so this is a very key document for every assessment that you complete in your coursework that you want to utilize as an outline. And if you want me to make a video of what that looks like, what that process looks like with Word, comment below and I will work on that for you. So these are your grades, non-performance, basic, proficient, distinguished. All right, so we're going to go now to your competency map. Going back into the course room, you can reach your competency map over here to the left-hand side. You click the link that says competency map and it will pull up for you. I've already got it pulled up, so I'm just gonna click over here. This is what it looks like. So we've got our course. Make sure you're in the correct course, which is 4,000 up here in the upper left. And then here it lets you know you're in that coursework. So I have 19 out of 19 criteria to complete and which I have done, and then you have four out of four assessments, which I've completed all my assessments. Just below that, to the right side, you'll see, once again, non-performance, basic, proficient, distinguished, and they're color-coded, just like in your rubric. Look at the top. Distinguished is green, proficient light green, basic is yellow, non-performance is red. Same here. Let's take a deeper dive into the competency map. At the lower quarter of the page, you'll notice a list of competencies numbered one, two, three, and four. We're gonna take a dive into competency four here at the bottom left, where they are eight out of eight criteria. If you click on the competency, this box will appear and essentially what it will do is it will take you through every competency, all eight of the competencies that are required throughout your assessments in this course. So here, produce text with minimal grammatical usage, spelling, and mechanical errors. That is one of the competencies, okay? This is graded here in assessment three. I'm sorry. Yeah, right here in applying ethical principles, which is the course and assessment three. OK. The second one listed here is also in assessment three. Integrate into text appropriate use of scholarly sources, evidence and citation style. Moving on down to the next one, this assessment two criteria or competency is, um, is found in assessment two. So if you notice, what I'm trying to say is these are competencies that are through going to be found throughout your assessments. Okay? I hope I'm making sense when I say that. So we've got here assessment four, we've got assessment four here, assessment three, assessment two. All right, so varying, you know, as you go through your assessments or your assignments, assessments are assignments, when you go to your competency map after it's been graded, you can go into that specific competency if you say get a proficient like I did right here and say, okay, why did I get a proficient? Oh, that's the criteria that I didn't meet? Bet, I'll go back in and I'll, you know, if you want to, you have the option of editing and adding that criteria that's missing so that you can go ahead and get that distinguished. All right, I hope that I've made sense with that. But essentially, 
This is your competency map, and you will see this for every one of your courses. Going back up to this up, up here to the upper left, um, when you drop down, you can go to each of your competencies for each of your courses. And these are your courses here, and over to the left is the term that you're in. So if you drop down, you've got spring, winter, for my case, and that's how you find the course that you're currently in. All right, that is my time. I pray that you have found value in the information that I've shared with you in the video. I hope that it was clear. If not, leave a comment down below and I will be sure to include your questions in the next video or even possibly do a Q&A or FAQ, FAQ type video as well. I thank you so much for joining me. Hey, if you like the information that I'm sharing with you on this channel, become a part of my tribe on here on YouTube. Click like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. If you notice at the lower portion of the page, sorry guys, competency three and four. Take two. Why is this happening to me? <laughs>